are in our car right now. It looks like we're leaving out of our car. It's loaded down. Chris is driving over here. Yeah. We are headed to Knoxville for Christmas. It is December 20-something, 23rd. <laughs> uh, I'm like crazy. I'm absolutely crazy right now after all the touring we've done this December and um, getting ready for Christmas and now headed to Knoxville. I feel like I can finally take a deep breath. We are done for the year. But we have one more gift that needs to be done and it is a Granny Square sweater for my niece, Dottie Jo. And I have started on it. I have some of my squares that I have started um, right here in my bag. And so we're gonna see if I can finish this sweater in the next two hours while we drive to Knoxville and we're taking you along for the ride. So I asked my sister what colors she likes Dottie Jo in right now and she said reds and blues. I was like, okay, sounds like kindergarten to me, but I shall do it. And I have just four colors that I'm using for this Granny Square cardigan. And usually I use a whole slew of colors but I'm just using four colors. I've got this little red, a sweet kind of powdery blue color, and then um, this light yellow and white. And so these are my colors for my squares. I need 18 squares total. And the square design that we are doing is our starburst. Can I talk? Starburst. Starburst granny square. <laughs> So I have the beginnings of them done. And last night before I went to bed, I started on the third round. We have to do one more round. Got to sew it together and we got to get started. So if you want a very in-depth tutorial on how to make a starburst granny square, I will link my crocheted sweater tutorial. I have a very in-depth guide on how to make these step by step but i'm just going to tell you the steps real quick if you're an absolute beginner i think you can still probably do it but if you have crocheted then this should be hopefully pretty easy to follow okay hi you're up against the side of the car so to do your first round make a slip knot put your hook in there and then you're going to chain four Then you're going to slip stitch into your first chain to make a little ring. You're going to chain three, and this counts as one double crochet right there. Bless your hearts, this is really hard to see. Okay, and then we're going to work 15 more double crochets into this ring, not into any, like just literally straight into the ring and that first chain of three counted as one so you need a total of 16 when you're done but you're working a total of 15 double crochet if that makes sense all right let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen So once you have your 16 double crochets, you are going to slip stitch to join it into a little circle. And then I always just act like I'm gonna chain one, cut the yarn, and pull a knot so it's tight. And that's how you do the first round of a starburst granny square. For round two, we need to add a new color of yarn in so I'm gonna use my white and I'm working just at the top of these double crochets that we just worked so I'm just gonna pull my yarn through and we're gonna chain three and this is my favorite round because I just think they're so cute it makes little puffs kind of so we're gonna put the yarn over the hook insert back into that top of the double crochet pull up a loop the yarn over insert again pull up a loop put the yarn over insert again pull up a loop so now we have one two three four five six seven loops on our hook we're gonna yarn over pull through and then chain 
one to close it and it makes a little puff. I know this probably isn't the most in-depth tutorial, but I thought it would be fun to do it more like a crochet along with me. I do majority of my crochet work in the car because that's when I have the most time to just sit down and and do it. Um, when I'm home, I crochet a little bit in the evenings if we have time and you know after supper if we sit down to watch a movie or something, I'll crochet. But for the most part, I get majority of my work done when I'm traveling to and from shows or traveling home to Knoxville stuff like that so I thought it would be fun to just crochet together in the car so just continue working these puff stitches into each stitch and you should have 16 total because we had 16 double crochets when you make it to the end just slip stitch into the top of that first one that we made again pull up a chain and then tie it off and we have our second round done I love this one. I think that they're so cutie. The third round is kind of like an unfinished double crochet that you work multiple times. So I'm gonna do red this time and we're not working into the tops of these stitches. We're working in between the puffs. So we're just putting our hook right there in between the puffs. So I'm gonna attach a new color, chain three once again. And this time you put the yarn over the hook, insert back into that puff, pull up a loop like you're gonna work a double crochet. Pull through two, but then don't pull through the other two. Put the yarn over, insert the hook, and do it again. Just pull through the first two, yarn over, insert the hook, pull through the first two, until you have four loops on your hook. Pull through all four, and this time we're gonna chain two. So once again, yarn over the hook, insert in between the puffs, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull through two, four loops on our hook, pull through all four, and then chain two. All right, we made it to the end of our third row right here. So once again, we just slip stitch into that first one that we made. And then this last row is when we finally turn it into a square. I'm obsessed with granny squares and I want to get, you know, you can look at a bunch of videos on YouTube and see vlogs on Pinterest and stuff like that and I do that and that's really fun but I also love to have like an actual book. I'm the same way when it comes to like cookbooks. I love looking at an actual cookbook and I think they make actual granny square books that have like all different kinds of granny squares and I should have put it on my Christmas list. The last round you need to turn this into a square. And the way we do that is by working different sizes of crochet stitches so that they start large and then go down into the center and then go back up large so that it gives us our corners of our square. So make a chain of four with your final color and we're gonna work triple crochets, which is where you put the yarn over the hook twice, insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through two. Now that first chain of four counted as a triple crochet. So you're gonna work three triple crochets total or if you're being technical, the chain of four counted as one and then you worked two more. Now into the next and we're working not in the tops of the stitches again. We're working just in between these little puffs that we made. So in directly into that next puff right here, we're gonna work three double crochet. And then after the double crochet, we're gonna work three half double crochet to the next one. And now we're gonna go back up to double crochet. And when I say back up, I just mean up in size of stitch. And then we're going to work three triple crochet. Ooh, my tails are getting in the way. So as you can see that 
already is starting to give us a nice straight edge, but we have to turn a corner since it's a square. So we're gonna chain three after that set of three triple crochet. And then we're gonna work another set of three triple crochet into the exact same space. And this is what is gonna give us our corner. See, there's our little corner. So now just working right along the circle, we're gonna go back to double crochet. So if you can remember triple, double, half double, and then back up double and triple, then you can do this pattern. Once you make it back around, we have this first set of triple crochet that we worked into, but we have our double crochet right here that we just finished in this row, so we have to turn this corner. So you just work right back into that original space, another set of three triple crochet. together and I have been working I got some coffee this is a white chocolate peppermint mocha oh my gosh. delicious you can't even taste the coffee that's my kind of coffee okay so I have let's count make sure we got all of them I've done the third row on all of them for me I feel like it's a lot easier to do like if I know I need 18 squares, I'll do 18 of the first round, and then I'll go do the second round on all 18, and then I'll go do the third round, instead of making like one whole square, and then putting it down, and making another whole square. It just seems like it goes quicker, or maybe my brain just like can comprehend it better because I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, then I move on to another phase and do that over and over again. I don't know, it's just my process. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, we made it to our first family party, and thankfully, this is not the one with just my family that I'm making Dottie Joe's sweater for. I didn't finish. But, we have all these squares done, and it really doesn't take too long to make a baby sweater, because Chris was saying that he thinks it's gonna be too big, but this, it's not gonna be too big. Like, this is the whole front panel of the sweater, right here, two squares. We'll do a square right here, we'll do a back panel, sleeves, and all that good stuff. But we are almost there. We have all of these squares completely done. Ow, I just hit my finger. And then we have these that still need to be done. So, to be continued. Update. <laughs> this is a pretty girl who's gonna get a sweater. Oh, damn. Team Spidey. Team Spidey? Dottie Joe say hi. Say hi. Hi. We have all of these with all of their, there's a lot going on, um, with all of their ends put in. So we are getting so much closer. Dottie has unfortunately seen the beginnings of her gift, but thankfully she doesn't know it's going to be a sweater yet, so it's still a surprise. Our next step in making our sweater is joining all of our squares together in the correct panels that we need. And I was doing this with a slip stitch join until Dottie Jo got a hold of my red yarn. And honestly, I think she would have been more happy with just a ball of yarn than a sweater. It was super cute. She was having a ball with it. So these two panels are the front of her little sweater. We'll have a panel over to the side right here that'll be on her side. Then we'll have our back panel. And then this right here is gonna be the sleeves. So the sleeves are gonna be you know, one square down this way and then a square in the back for her little arms to go through on each side and then we'll do the back panel. But here is how I am putting these together. If you want a more in-depth tutorial, 
I have one uh, when I did my full-sized granny square sweater, but I'm doing a slip stitch join, which is where I'm going into the outer corner, or I'm going into the outer stitch of each stitch. And then I'm gonna add in the other ones right here. So basically what I do is I go into this outside loop right here. Like that. I muted the original video audio because obviously there was a lot going on <laughs> in the house. We just opened up gifts and the babies were playing. But I keep the working yarn underneath. I put the hook into the outside loops of each stitch and then I pull that yarn through like a slip stitch and sometimes you have to manhandle it a little bit but this is the slip stitch join and like I said you can get a more in-depth tutorial on this in my original granny square sweater video that I made but you're basically just inserting the hook into the outside loops and you're pulling that working yarn through and as you can see I've got it underneath that working yarn is always under underneath those two squares that I'm joining together. And that gives us a nice flat seam. Okay, update. I wanted to show you all the panels that you would need um, in case you wanna make one of these for a special little child in your life. We had a great family Christmas today, but Dottie Jo leaves tomorrow, so I've gotta get it done before she leaves. But this is definitely a project, even though we didn't get it done in the car, it's still a project that you can absolutely get done in about a day and a half, which is great for a gift that's gonna be this special. But as far as your panels go, we have our two front panels right here. I'll move this out of the way so you can see. So I have sewn with a slip stitch join um, these two together for the front two panels right here and then this is going to just be like the side so it'll go around that way around the side of her body and then our sleeve will come out this way but I went ahead and attached it so we have our two front panels of three and these little L shapes so you need those and then you need your back panel which is four of these so as you can see when we go to sew it all together, it'll be like this, where we'll have our front panel, like this around here to our back panel. So hopefully that can help show you kind of how the sweater's coming together. And then you need your sleeves, which your sleeves are a little cylinder of four squares all sewn together. Now something that I realized after I sewed one of these sets of sleeves together is with my granny square sweater, I didn't have this little side panel right here to go around the side. I just sewed my sleeves directly on to the side of the front and back square, just like this. But what I want to do with Dottie Joe's is I want hers to join in with this little side piece back here. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna have to take this part off, but if you are making this and you're not making it up as you go like I am, then you can learn the correct way to do it. So I have this panel started. This is my set of four for the other sleeve. And what I'm gonna do is it this way is I will sew that I'll start sewing this together or joining it not sewing doing our little slip stitch join I'll slip stitch join this together and then once I get to here then I will start to join this one to this one and I can join up this way I'll flip it over onto the back side like that and come all around the back side, and then I'll join this part back down to this part where I will meet them up. And the reason you want to do it that way is that way when it, her arm goes in here, this is going to be open in this little armpit section. You don't want to do it where it's all joined together like this, because then this is separate from this, and there is no like armpit space. 
technically you could probably do it like this, but it's going to be much nicer if you sew all of that together. So after we get that done, then we will just be doing our borders and our finishing touches. Just to show you what that's gonna look like, I went ahead and sewed this little side panel, the square on, and I have our sleeve right here, and I have sewn it up, as you can see right here, but I've left the end open because now we're gonna take just this first part not the back part, but just this first square, and we're gonna sew right to here, and then we'll go up here, and then flip it over and go all the way around. So I'll show you how I do that. So we have been sewing these two pieces together of our sleeve, but we've stopped just about halfway through that square. And now we're gonna come along just to the first part of this corner panel that we have right here and do the same thing we've been doing the whole time. I'm just gonna put it in the outside of the stitch and then join it to our sleeve. Okay, I have one final update for you before we call it a night. I have most of my ends woven in, which is so nice. And as you can see, the sweater is coming together. Hopefully you can see. But something that I was thinking about when I made my sweater, I had a row of squares down the center that I then made like my collar out of and stuff like that. Well, this sweater, since it's just the baby sweater, I can't sew this square to this back square and this square to this back square because then she has nowhere to put her head. There's no head hole. So what we're gonna do tomorrow morning is we're gonna sew this just about this much in so that it leaves this much as an opening, but then it still fits her shoulders good. And then I'm gonna add in our collar border piece, which will go, I'll make separately and I'll sew onto the collar. I'll sew down this part. I'll sew it around the bottom to give it a nice finished look. And then we will add our little cuffs to the ends of our sleeves. And we will have a baby crocheted sweater. First thing I tackled when I woke up the next morning was joining the two top squares just to the center of the square so that we could have a little collar area for her and it fit great. It was a good call. We have our little stitching halfway through each of these squares. And I think what I'm gonna do, cause I'm just making it up as I go, I'm going to take my white yarn and I'm gonna do just single crochets all along the edge. And then I think I'm gonna do the true border and the cuffs in blue. I was just sitting here with mama as I was doing the single crochet stitch around the edges. And that's one thing that I love about crochet is I can just sit and talk with my friends and family while I do it. And it honestly helps me focus. I know that kind of sounds crazy. Until I got interrupted by this cutie patootie. Who is it? Hey, what is it? Tell her. Tell, her. Tell me. Hey, what? Play. Come play. Play. When it came time to make the cuff, I decided to do it in blue and make it separate from the sweater. This is the same way I do it when I'm making a granny square sweater for myself. So to make this cuff, you just need to work half double crochets and you'll work into the third loop of the half double crochet. So for Dottie's sizing, she's just over a year and I wanted it to be really snug on her. So I did a chain of nine to start. I skipped two stitches and I worked half double crochets in each stitch starting from the third chain from the hook. So you have seven 
half double crochets total, you'll chain two, turn your work, and you'll work into the third loop of the half double crochets. You'll continue to do this until you reach your desired size. For me, that was eight rows, but for you, you can customize it to make it as big or as small as you wanna make it. But working into the third loop gives you those cute little ridges to just give it some extra style. Be sure to leave a long tail when you get done making these so you can use that in your yarn needle to attach them to the ends of your sleeves. I like to crinkle up the granny square part of the sleeve so that it gives a nice puff to the sweater. Okay, so we have our little cuffs on and they look so cute. I decided to do those in blue. And then I did our little border just to give it a nice finished look in white. But I was gonna do something thicker right here, but I'm afraid it's, it's gonna be too thick it's gonna like overlap each other since it's the squares are so big and the sweater itself is so small but we are going to add just a little bit of a thicker collar right here around this edge and then we'll be done so I worked that single crochet stitch all around the top sides and bottom of the sweater to give it a nice finished look but I really think doing this half double crochet right around the collar portion only really took it up a notch as well it didn't take me but 10 extra minutes to add this on, and I think that it gave it a lot of character. Oh, Daddy. Daddy! Daddy, can we try it on? <laughs> can we try on your coat of mini colors? Mini colors. I'll do it! I'll do it! I'll do it! You'll, You'll do, it? do it? Okay, we gotta put our little finger yeah. in here. Oh, one finger's coming oh, through. Wait, there we go. Yeah. This is Sissy's new jacket. 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 Sissy's new jacket.